Welcome back to a new episode here in Suave. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how you can use this cool clone or freeze clone effect, which was inspired by the video I'm showing right here by Josh Ofemi. Hopefully, I pronounced it right. And also Herman Huang, which I'm gonna try to link them below. Uh, yeah, so I just saw that video and I thought it was pretty cool and I was like, oh yeah, I can probably replicate that in DaVinci Resolve. So I'm doing that right now. So let's just start right away. What you want to do is, I'm not going to use uh, the cards video that they have there, but I'm going to use a new video so I can show you that you can use these in any type of video. You can use these probably for like ads or commercials or if you want to do a cool intro or if you just want to have fun with a cool effect. And music videos also so yeah let me just show you right away the first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna want to determine where you want your freeze frame to be as you have seen in the intro here I chose this frame to be the one that gets like frozen so I'm gonna cut the footage right here then I'm gonna go one frame ahead and I'm gonna cut it again I'm gonna drag these and I use 15 frames for the video that you saw in the intro so I'm gonna do the same again there it goes and first we have yet to freeze these frames so how do we do that you can go here to clip and then go to freeze frame but i uh, have to select it first there it goes for some reason it was not letting me do it before but right now we can and it's frozen there so that's that's 15 frames there and we're gonna bring back our footage then after that so we have this one that's frozen so we're gonna go and we're gonna right click and create a new fusion clip and then i'm gonna go into fusion and in fusion what you want to do is you're gonna copy these one time the first time and on this copy you're gonna use the polyline stroke and you're gonna drag draw a mask around your subject and I'm gonna speed this up right now so that you don't have to watch me do this whole thing. Okay, so once you have your mask in place, you're gonna see that this is what we have here. We have cut the image that we have. So what we wanna do is we're gonna create a few copies of these behind this. So we're gonna right click, select, sorry, we're gonna select everything and then press Ctrl C and Ctrl V gonna do one two and three copies of it and we're gonna link this here the reason why I'm not using the duplicate node is because the duplicate nodes duplicates the the source file one on top of the other one so this is the way to do it if you wanted the echo or the clones to show up behind it right so we're gonna go and add a transform node to each of these I'm gonna copy and paste. Uh, well, we don't actually need to add a transform node to the first one because we're not moving this one. Okay, so then we're gonna go to the first frame, frame zero. We're gonna create a keyframe for the position on the three transform nodes. We're gonna go to frame six and we're gonna move them where we want them to move. So we're gonna, all of them are gonna end at the frame six. But you can also do like overlapping. You can make one get to the final point at frame four, six, and eight. It's up to you. But yeah, so let's first move this one, which is the second one. And we're gonna do it like that. Of course, this one is, looks a little bit weird because it's that back, but it's just for the sake of the video, right? There, and then the last one here. And then we're gonna leave a little bit of time there. And then on frame nine, we're gonna create the new keyframe for all of them. And then on frame 14, we're going to bring them back to normal by putting the value 0.5 here, which resets the value here. After that, what you want to do is you're going to select all of these transform nodes and you're going to go to your spline editor. And then here, and what I did was I select everything. I press F to make them smooth. And I also selected these point and I press T and I change the ease out so it drags a little bit so it starts a little bit slower and then I do the same for this one and on this one I wanted to end more abruptly so I'm gonna change the ease in and increase it a little bit okay so now we have 
So now we have that. So what's what's the next thing? The next thing that we can add, we can add a drop shadow, and then we're gonna make the angle be towards the backs that we have, and we're gonna make the distance be a little bit lower, and then we're simply gonna copy these to the other uh, backs that we have here. That's that adds a little bit of effect to it. And then one last thing is we're going to go to our transform node and we're going to add motion blur to each of them. So we're going to go here to the settings and click on motion blur. And I put them on, on the shutter angle 80 and I left the quality on two. You can play around with it and do whichever you like the most. It's up to you. I personally don't like if it is too blurry so that it doesn't even under like so that you can even catch what it's happening. So I like I like it to be subtle. There we go. We got our motion blurs right here, and we have the motion blurs set up. So it looks a little bit smoother and looks cool like that. You can also play around with the drop shadow if you want to animate it so it disappears back again. But since it's not even a second worth of animation, it's probably gonna be um, it's not gonna be able to get caught by the eye of the viewer. So one last thing that I did was I because. If it looks like that, all the black ba bags are not that impressive or artsy or whatever. So what I did was I went to these transform nodes and on each of them I took one of these process RGB colors. So I took the blue one from these one, let's say, it's gonna make it yellow. I take the green one from these one and I take the red from this one. So that's gonna add the colors to it and you can play around with it. You can also use a fill color if you want, but that would be up for another video. So let's go back to the edit screen. And this is how it's going to look like once it renders out. But it's a little bit too stiff yet, right? Because in these, it's sort of like we can see the thing happening. So what I, one thing that I did was I went to the dynamic zoom here. Whoops, one click. And we're going to open it up and I put is in and out. So that just makes the effect itself a little bit better. And then I also color graded it a little bit so that it adds that flash effect. But yeah, so this is the that's for another tutorial, but this is the basic for it. On the other clips, I also use dynamic zoom. So they all sort of have a little bit of zoom and movement in them. So let's see with the dynamic zoom. Yeah, that's yeah. And with the other clips having dynamic zoom, it plays a little bit better that way too. So yeah, that was it for this video, this clone freeze effect. Um, you can play around with it. You can add it to pretty much anything. If you have commercials or, or like Instagram ads or whatever, you can do that and it will look really interesting and catch the attention of the viewer. So yeah, I hope that you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and comment down below if you have any ideas for future videos or any comments that you want to know. Um, yeah, let me know down below and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next video here in Suave.